<laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. No, we're Black Salt Games. Uh, we're here to stream Dredge for you and talk about it a bit. Um, my name's Alex. I'm uh, an artist. I did the 2D art for Dredge and am kind of at fault for its uh, visual design. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's me, yeah. All right, oh, you're looking at me now. Is that me next? All right, uh, I'm Mikey. So, how's it going, guys? So I'm one of the 3D artists on the project. Um, Alex at Mission, but he also does a bunch of 3D and stuff as well. And then I'm also going to be the person playing through the game because I think I'm the most incompetent gamer, which should hopefully make for some interesting footage. So we'll see how that kind of pans out. <laughs> Uh, my name's Joel, uh, I'm the programmer and also the writer for the game. Cool, and hiding over to our right over here. Off camera. Off camera, who's going to be dealing with all of your um, questions and requests and stuff like that, will be Nadia. Yeah. Just nodding silently in all the right, background there. Again. Yeah, she's yeah, going to yeah. let us know if anybody has questions or... Well, actually, Joel's got that there as well. All right. Nice and small. Cool. Alright. Cool. This is the intro cutscene. Um, just serves to kind of set the, set the scene for the game. Um, basically you're a sort of out of work fisherman responding to a job posting um, in this paper. And on your way to the location, you have a little bit of an accident. And <laughs> a little bit. A little bit of an accident. Um, and that kind of just sets up the game for what what's going to happen. So I'm not going to read everything. I'll read the first bit verbatim, but I'll try to summarize the other text. Um, so, uh, the morning light fills your eyes and you try to sit upright. You're lying on the cold, wet dock where you collapsed the night before. A short man is shouting orders at a handful of workers disembarking from a boat nearby. The man notices you. Welcome to Greater Marrow. I must say, quite the dramatic first impression. I see you've already introduced yourself to the jagged rocks along the bay. Did you not see the lighthouse? It was shining right at you. Oh well, I'm glad to see our new fisherman upright and breathing. Your boat was hopelessly damaged, but I've had a few of the locals move your things to one of our old vessels. We'll catch up later to discuss more details. I'll let you get out there to catch some fish, see if you can fill your cargo while you get your bearings in the light. Finally, I don't, I don't suppose I need to say this, but get back by sundown before the fog rolls in. Keep a close eye on the time, it can really creep up on you. So Mikey's going to undock and start sailing. Um, you can see some tutorial dialogues um, going past uh, to tell you how to play the game. So moving the boat, moving the camera, uh, and now we're going to start fishing. No! Oh. <laughs> so, so <laughs> fishing is like a timing mini game. Um, you can catch fish without interacting with the timing part of it, but it just takes way longer. Um, and each fish you catch has to fit somewhere into your spatial inventory, so um, you can uh, rotate your fish. Uh, other fish have different shapes, which you'll see later on in the demo, uh, to try to be as efficient as possible. And we've also just caught a trophy fish, uh, which was a special target to hit, and that one should be worth a bit more. Yeah. yeah how much is that? I'm just gonna say that but we fished out that spot, um, like good environmentalists. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next one. Clear it all out. Now we've got some different fish here. We've got cod, uh, which are a slightly more awkward shape, but we can rotate them around and fit them in as efficiently as we can. And that one's depleted as well. Uh, so, as you can see on screen, uh, in Dredge, time only moves when you are moving. Um, so, if Mikey stops moving and looks around with the camera, time is actually stopped. So, you, c you can, yeah, take your time uh, and sort of plan out your fishing route um, and make the most of the day. Because time moves pretty quickly, and as the mayor said, you want to get back by nightfall. 
How many times have we reviewed how long it takes for time to pass in the game anyway? I think I think the original builds time passed like three times as fast as this, and we've kind of like slowed it down and slowed it down. Um, but as the game progresses, you get better engines and you can go faster and you, know, you sort of get a better handle on on the time of day. Yeah, each iteration now, kind of our days have got longer and longer, but. It's part of part of the kind of charm of our game, and a, one of its point of point of differences is that you know we have a pretty short day, night cycle if you're actually doing stuff, and that feeds into the mini game too. Like how if uh, our, our mini game, if you aren't engaging with it, actually will take more time, and you'll find yourself at night, like unexpectedly. It actually actually kind of stems like time as a resource stems from like the original game design where um, it was like a turn-based game yeah which was gonna be really weird and not particularly fun but <laughs> we sort of kept that mechanic in perfect packing yeah you really perfectly filled your inventory it's quite satisfying yeah so the tutorial has told us to open up our ability wheel and select the lights, uh, which uh, we can then toggle to turn on. Uh, our lights aren't particularly good right now, uh, so it doesn't make much of a difference, but you will eventually get better lights and they help you see at night. And the foghorn, which is just a bit of self-expression. For the most part. And other things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the questions in the chat is, why do other ships move uh, while you're stopped? This person's obviously played the demo. <laughs> um, that's, a good, that's a good question. It's a good point. It's, it was too easy, basically, if they stopped yeah. when you stopped, right? Yeah, and, and, and in like practice, it actually felt wrong. <laughs> yeah, so some things kind of uh, don't obey the laws of time in our game. Yeah, because I guess it would have, I think it was looking a bit weird when you got like the trees and the waters all moving and then everything just stops and just stares at you while you stare back at it. Yeah, that was another thing. It really broke the ambience of the game if like all the trees stop swaying and you know, the wind stops blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've returned to town in one piece, thankfully, uh, and the mayor wants to talk about our boat because he's given us a loner boat because uh, ours was too damaged. So, yeah, he's going to sell it to us, although we don't have much money at the moment, so he's going to loan it to us and we're going to pay off that loan. Um, yeah, and also as we pay off that loan, the town will be improved in some ways. And of course we can do that by going to the fishmonger. The jolliest man you'll ever see. Somebody said he looks like Fish. Penguin from Batman. Oh, the mayor? Oh, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor, oh. he definitely looks a little shifty and stuff like that. I mean the fishmonger, look at yeah. his, oh. his smile. Yeah, Yeah. so so a fishmonger is uh, probably our most tired and depressed looking character. <laughs> um, also covered in flies. Uh, question, guys? Yep. Why do the other ships move while you're stopped? We've answered that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously not. I'll leave it to you. So the fishmonger is explaining that uh, he's going to pay us more money for bigger and fresher fish uh, and also just some fish are worth more than, than other fish so you really want to get your catch back to the fishmonger uh, pretty quickly otherwise they'll start to lose value. We can see here as Mikey moves over fish that there's different values for each one. And what's, he, what's the trophy worth? The trophy is like super big, yeah. so it's like worth the most that a mackerel can be worth. Um, but yeah, for these small fish, there's not a huge amount of difference between them. You can sell fish individually, um, or you can also just hold the button down and sell all of them in one go. Nice. Maya was standing outside the store waiting for us and seemed pleased with our day's efforts. And it's going to give us a research part which uh, in the full game you can use to research new equipment like new rods and new engines and stuff and he's, he's also going to direct us to the shipwright who um, is going to be really important in upgrading our boat so we're going to go and chat to her who's currently repairing a damaged boat um, and she's going to tell us that she can make improvements to our boat here and also fix it up 
One of the other important mechanics when upgrading your boat is that when you move equipment around, it takes time. Um, so again, feeding into the whole time is a resource thing. And yeah, the bigger the, equi the equipment is, the longer it takes to install. Um, so we've got a few, a couple of rods here available to us. Um, only one we can afford though. So we're gonna install a shallow rod, which lets us catch a different type of fish. But it's night time, so we should probably sleep. Yeah, all right then. For now. <laughs> for now. Yeah, for now. Was it always planned to have that day-night cycle in the game? From the very start? I think so. It was, wasn't it? It's yeah. pretty fundamental to like the spooky atmosphere of the game. Oop. Right. Yeah, it's on dark. And let's see what fish are available now. So yeah. it looks like fish that we were kind of plundering, they've all still haven't come back just yet. Yeah, so fish do replenish over time. Uh, and the more that you leave in a spot, the faster they'll replenish as well. Um, and if you completely exhaust a spot, it'll take quite a while to come back. Cool, now I've got that new rod, I can pick up a new type of fish. Because obviously this fish, if you look underneath where it says disturbed water on the left, it tells you what kind of fish it is. So this one says it's a shallow fish. And underneath our cargo area, you can see that we can actually catch coastal and shallow fish. If I can actually hit them. No, I'm looking at the wrong screen. I will look at the wrong screen. So for yeah, so we've got two screens up. So one's on a laptop in front of us, and then there's the big TV, so we can all see ourselves and everything. And then there's a little bit of uh, kind of like delay on things, but also I don't think it would have made too much of a difference anyway, because I still miss them <laughs> normally on the little screen. We have another question, which is, what was the reasoning for repairing the boat, not costing time? I think in the prototype, it did cost time. Yeah. And maybe early on it did as well. Um, I don't remember if there was a specific reason. Yeah, I'm just trying to recall. Um, I actually don't. I actually don't know off the top of my head. No. Um, <laughs> no, the wrong skin. So you caught some flounder, and now you're catching these these eels. You can actually tell which fish are in which spot uh, because you can like see them. From the overworld, you don't actually have to be in this mini game to, to see the silhouette. Each, pretty much every fish has a unique um, appearance in the game. Yeah, so hopefully you can learn to identify them just by looking at the actual fish in the world. Yeah. Um, and, and at the very least, you should be able to tell which ones you have or haven't got. Like, there's some big looking fish over there that we kind of haven't gone over yet. I go over to one of them now. Yeah, you can also use your spyglass. Um, to have a look, that might be a little bit close, but yeah, so the spyglass is an ability that lets you get a closer look at things, and also you can hover over um, fishing spots, and if you've caught that fish before, it'll tell you what's there, and if you haven't, it'll tell you what you need to catch that type of fish. But these fish need oceanic rods, which we do not have. Yeah, so I've got one of these bottles. Yeah, so the messages in a bottle um, are ways that we sort of deliver uh, lore to the player. We try to make like the, the main content of the game uh, like as dialogue light as we can if people don't really want to read pages and pages of text, but we also try to put extra dialogue in as many places as we can that are, that's like completely optional. Um, so if you really want to do get into things and like figure out what's really going on, then you're going to want to be searching around for that extra information. Yeah, there's, there's a lot happening kind of behind the scenes that, that's hinted at, and if you want to know more, then you're going to want to look for these extra things. Yeah, I think we're big fans of the way that they kind of do lore and stuff in games like all the Dark Souls games and everything like that, where it's not really just out in front of you. You kind of have to really read all the flavor text to things, and we thought that was a really cool way of doing things. Yeah. They just disappeared. Yeah, so when it becomes night, uh, the, the types of fish change, so... You might find yourself like sailing towards a spot of fish and then they suddenly disappear. Uh, it's because you stayed out of it too late. But there are some fish that only yeah. appear at night, as we know. So this is one of those night fish, which is the arrow of squid. I'm not going to figure out a way to do it, not yeah. now. You could it's ditch a flounder. 
I'm still gonna end up with one of these things out here. So. You're still good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. So part of the game is like evaluating how efficient your inventory can be, or like if you want to, that can be part of the game. Because, like we said earlier, not all fish are worth the same amount of money. Some fish are worth more like per square than others. Um, so we have a few questions. What are some of the gaming influences uh, that influence Dredge? Um, I mean, there's heaps, right? We've all played like hundreds of games, so all of those technically influence us. Yeah. But the the original game design came <laughs> from an old Flash game called Motherload, which is basically focused around this cool loop of like going out, like digging for gems, taking that back to town, selling it and upgrading, and then just doing that thing better and better every time. So that's what Dredge is. It's, you know, going out, getting fish, upgrading your boat so you can get more and better fish. There was a bit of like a risk reward kind of, um, how, how far can I go to get these things I want and we'll still be safe. Mm. And we've very much kept that inspiration right through the whole of de development, yeah. Yeah. I think another really funny thing was that whatever game we're playing at the current time, there'd usually be something of interest that we're like, oh man, that's kind of cool. Like, we should do something like that in our game. So there's a lot of like little random things that we kind of came across as we were playing that we've gone, yeah, let's put something like that into the game. It's it just kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we, we've got the fish for this order, which we can um, fulfill pretty easily. Um, we have another question, which is, what will research parts do um, if the dry dock is for materials? So, um, research parts are basically a completely separate tech tree. Um, I'll go to it soon. Which we'll, mm. we'll go and visit in a sec, um, once he's told us that he wants us to fish at night. Which we actually have oh, may as well give him a squid him. for already. Give him that one. So I can eat this, right? You can oh. you can put that there. It, it doesn't table, matter where it is. It makes me unhappy though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can put it vertically to me, doesn't it? Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just learned that today ourselves anyway, at least I learned it. Yeah. Alright, so let's research. go check out the uh, research thing. Yeah. Oh, no, something's not. Yeah, cool. So we sell some fish. Um, I think some people are confusing this button for settings. I'm seeing a lot of people like not going into this research screen. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, research isn't available in the demo. Uh, so research parts don't really have much of a use in the demo, sorry. Um, but yeah, research allows you to get better rods, different rods, rods with different shapes uh, and, and different speeds. And it's your standard like tech tree. You've got to get the ones before to get the get the other ones. And you'll see all these. Well, most of these rods catch more than one type, so they become more and more uh, efficient. But also at the same time, they take up more space, or they might be kind of like a little bit awkward. Yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously, like some of these big ones, just simply won't fit on our starter boat. Yeah. So you have to be upgrading your ship at the same time, sort of in tandem with these. Um, and yeah, there's a few different tabs for engines, and then crab pots and trawling nets, which those last two you can't see in the demo. Uh, another question which is, will there be a global scoreboard for fish sizes? Um, that's, that's a cool idea. Um, <laughs> I feel like they'd be, like, the, the fish sizes would be, like, maxed out on day one. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, there are, there are, like, the biggest, a certain fish, like, the, there's a size that it can only grow to, mm. and I feel like it'll get to that, the leaderboard would get to that, and then it wouldn't, wouldn't be able to move. Yeah. But it is a really cool idea. So we've just met the lighthouse keeper who is approaching us from the lighthouse uh, and she's looking at us with concern and apprehension. Why are you here, she says. Yeah, I've come to meet people that You've come to meet us. people. Okay. <laughs> and there's no people here for you to meet. Well, so do yourself a favor and move on. A little shifty. And rude. And rude. She's yeah. quite rude. Right. Um, but the man is going for us. So he wants us to head east towards Little Marrow and deliver this package to the dock worker. Uh, which is dripping slightly. That's fine. But we're going to be paid if we are quick about it. He doesn't want the package to spoil. Um, so if we open up our map, actually, through the, the cabin interface, um, we can see that we're going just to the east, like a couple of, a couple of quadrants to the east. Um, yeah, so the, the mayor said he doesn't want the package to spoil. So this is this is kind of like a timed quest. 
um, you can't really fail any quests in Dredge, you can just complete them in different ways. So if we take our time about this, we can still complete the quest, but people just won't be quite as happy about it. Um, there aren't a huge number of timed quests in the game, um, and it's certainly not like a major element. So you're fishing on the way, alright, we'll do that one answer with a question from Shane. <laughs> um, somebody's asked, uh, can you give us some clues on what other things we can expect in the full game? Uh, like the mini games, different abilities. So yeah, one of the main things that the demo doesn't have is just really show off many of the abilities. Um, as you can see in this ability wheel, this will be filled out. Um, and the abilities get a little stranger and more curious as the game goes on, so look forward to those. Uh, and in terms of fishing styles, there's um, trawling, trawling uh, which is like a passive fishing thing. You basically deploy your trawl net and sail around and you'll catch fish over time. There are some fish you can only catch while trawling. And there are fish that it won't even catch at all, but it is a good kind of like, I'm in an exploring mood so I'll equip my trawl net because I can go somewhere, you know, and not get, not spend a lot of time at fishing spots. So it's a good option for players who want to explore for a little while, yeah. or for a lot of while. <laughs> so the dock worker's going to take our package, um, and he's not going to show us what's inside it, though. Um, somebody, yeah, I sorry, I missed that question from before where somebody asked about upgrading the Falkhorn. We we really thought about <laughs> this actually. Um, <laughs> We quite like it as an idea because the Falcon's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's somewhere on on the list of things that we would want to do, but I don't know if it'll if it'll get done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you play shrimp. Oh, it's good. Oh, in game. In game. Yeah. Okay. yeah, right there. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, another question is: uh, Will there be future demos for us to try as the game gets further along into development? Or was this demo just to test the waters? Um, we're currently not planning any any future demos. There might be a demo. We might put the demo back up when the game releases. We're not sure yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we'll get another more extended demo though, will there? I really appreciate the pun. The, the pun that you put in that question, by the way. <laughs> I would say not publicly. Yeah. Like any Yeah, so any, I don't know if you heard that, any, any future stuff will probably be a closed demo to maybe test further stuff. That's another reason to jump to the Discord. Yeah, yeah, so you can, you can join our Discord. The, the link is, um, if you scroll down the Steam page, there's a link to the Discord there. Um, yeah. Because that's where we got a lot of our early testers, we pulled them all from uh, Discord and stuff like that anyway to just get people to play through the game. Yeah, so you've just caught a Cyclopean flounder, um, which is one of our aberrated fish. Uh, so this, the description of this is a sprawling jellied mass spills from a single eye socket. What appears to be a dark pupil is in fact the center of an egg. Gnarly. <laughs> Pretty gnarly. Um, and in fact, if you open up the pursuit board, uh, you will see that we've got a new quest for showing this fish to Fishmonger because maybe he'll be able to tell us a little bit more about it. How much fun did you have writing up all of those things? I, I gotta say, writing the descriptions for the aberrated fish was probably the most fun I, I had because I went really over the top and really edgy with the descriptions. <laughs> um, and, and certainly like, Seeing the art that Alex came up with for these was always incredible. Like it's it's so fun to just you know, put them in the game and see them in the game. You know what? It turned out to be a real challenge um, making up a lot of the aberrations. It's just kind of like competing with the real ocean, because real things you find underwater are get pretty weird. Where are you now, Mikey? Gotta get that eel. Cause Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you can see on the on the surface of the water there's like a, an effect which actually shows that there's a special fish. Yeah. Cinematic pan. 
we've got space for exactly one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know it was going to be like one of those sort of spots anyway. Okay, cool. So we've got, we've got a barbed eel, which is a spine broken with sharp angles and crooked curves, a row of teeth bent on revenge. Unspecified revenge. <laughs> Who hurt that eel? <laughs> what yeah. have they done to you? So we actually got a couple of aberrations today, yeah. which is pretty good. So aberrations, uh, along with being creepy and cool, are also worth a lot more money. So the fishmonger is going to take a look at that aberrated fish and inhale its scent. He seems really happy. He, he is. He's, this, this is the type of specimen to liven up today. <laughs> so he runs his fingers firmly along the length of the fish as though feeling for something. He pushes from one side of its stomach and a small shape can be seen against the bulging scales. He slices it open and pulls out a delicately patterned handkerchief, which is quite weird. Um, he's going to give it to us though and pay us for the fish. Uh, but reckons that he will pay us well for any other aberrations, which we do have. How much is that eel worth? So that eel is worth like 45 bucks. A lot. Which is quite a lot of money. Yeah. I sell all these so did, Yeah, just sell it all. Yeah. Sure. So these are the most exciting part of his day, by the looks of it. And he loves getting them. The weird guy. But a man is looking through your cabin window, covered in shadow. And he says, I know what you took to the fishmonger, and I'll be clear, I know he extracted an artifact from it. And he wants to inspect this artifact uh, on Blackstone Isle, which is to the south. And he seems trustworthy enough, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fact that you can't see his face and everything, that's... That's how you know. Yeah. I could probably just... I think you should get some engines. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so, we've already got an engine, but we've got spaces for another engine, so we may as well uh, increase our speed a bit, because you start out pretty slow in this game. You going to get a, a, a light now, or should we... Yeah, yeah get a light. Yeah. Risk it. Yeah. Which is a bad one. Yeah, so different lights of different ranges and stuff, and... Definitely get a good one. Yeah. So the mayor is walking quickly towards us in a good mood. Uh, and thanks partly to our efforts, the town is growing and swarming with visitors any day. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, he has granted consent for the shipwright to expand her facilities and the fishmonger services have improved. So that's good. Um, why don't we check out what that is before we head to Blackstone yeah. Isle. So Dry Dock is another place where you can upgrade your ship in a more significant way. Um, it's not actually available in the demo, uh, but this is a place that you can add extra like grid cells to your ship and like convert grid cells into like rod, rod slots and engine slots and eventually upgrade your boat like entirely to a completely new visual for the boat. Mm -hmm. um, so the little inventory we are managing on the right hand side can grow pretty significantly by the end of the game. Um, You've got to feed this materials, uh, which we don't actually have access to yet. I mean, you can see, if we were to get it, then we'd get these additional spots in addition to here. Yeah, that's right. So that's a way that you'd be able to fit in the larger rods from the research section. Right. Um, do you want to go at night? Yeah, might as well go at night. Now we've got a bit of lights, and there's also some more night fish I need to pick up. We've only got like, that one limited squid. So you might be able to see at the top of the screen, it might be a little bit small, but um, underneath the time there is sort of a pulsing effect, um, because we're spending time out at night and our character is slowly developing a sense of panic. Uh, and in fact you can see the little eye indicator there has opened. And things happen in the game when you become panicked, um, or things reveal themselves when you become panicked. Uh, and managing your panic is, is a, a, a core part of the game. So those are the fish we needed for the fishmonger's order, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's about oh. it. Yeah. There's any more left in there. 
So yeah, this is the tutorial telling us about this whole eye thing, and the panic levels and everything. <laughs> and yeah, so we can reduce panic by sleeping at any dock, um, and having better lights and being in the vicinity of lights yeah. helps reduce your panic. Just generally being outside of the fog. <laughs> So we're here at Blackstone Isle to meet the Collector character. He's standing in the doorway watching us approach, holding a book in one hand, bound in crimson with silver ribbons. So he is a collector um, of many things, art and artifacts, treasures and truths. And we have something for him. We have the handkerchief which he's going to have a look at, and he recognizes this from an old ship he's been searching for that sank many years ago. He's trying to retrieve a number of items from this ship. For, I'm sure, completely good reasons. Yeah. Um, he's going to outfit our ship with a dredging crane, um, which allows us to get at these things. And we're going to accept that. You can decline his offer, but I wouldn't suggest declining the offer. Uh, so he wants a ring, a necklace, a watch, a music box, and a key. And yeah, so we should try to find out where those things might be. So now we have a little dredging crane hanging from the back of our boat, which is kind of cute. Um, <laughs> but it means we can access dredging spots now. In fact, there's one straight ahead of us, I think. So dredging is a slightly different mini game. Um, basically, you avoid the uh, the red things, uh, and then you get a worn gold ring, which I'm sure has some kind of value. Um, maybe we want to. Do you want to head to the trader first? Yep. Show off the trader. Yeah. So, so not everything that you dredge is, you know, significant enough to hand to the collector. Uh, there was a trader character, a little Maro, who uh, deals in sort of trinkets and smaller valuables. So here's our trader character. I think he's my favorite one. <laughs> I just like this look. Pipe. So yeah, he specializes in antiques, in antiques and jewelry and will purchase trinkets that we find. Uh, and in fact, we do have something for him. a. $15 ring, which is not bad, I suppose. Yeah. For something so small, definitely. Yeah, it's and worth its way. Keep in mind that um, trinkets, they, they don't expire, but fish have kind of an expiry date. Yeah. So you can't you can't hold on to fish forever and they keep their value, but trinkets will keep their value forever. So there's a guy here who has what looks like a quest for us. So if we ask him about shipwrecks, he's going to tell us that, in fact, his son was lost at sea a few years ago, um, but the son's body was never recovered, uh, which pains this guy greatly, uh, but he's noticed that we have a dredging crane installed, and if we were able to recover any of the um, personal possessions of the son, uh, that would be of help to him. So we can actually check on our map and see where that might be. Um, which we can access through the cabin, uh, and there's, it's actually sort of just around the back of the little marrow, so we could go and grab that. I'm aware that our fish are going stale at the moment, though. <laughs> That'd be funny. Plenty yeah. more fish in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a question which is, are there options for upgrading the storage at docks? We thought about this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so because storage is actually accessible, it's like a universal storage, you can store something at one dock and it's available at others, which is like really powerful and it's really video gaming, but it was really annoying if it wasn't that way. Yeah. We thought that, um, you know, keeping storage the size that it is kind of kept that in check a little bit. So at the moment we don't have any plans for upgrading storage. Hopefully when things aren't locked away in the demo, you'll you know, be able to spend the stuff that you've probably accumulated in your storage in the demo. I'm sorry, I should have been. 
So we found the belt buckle, which is was in the shipwreck, um, and that's actually a trinket, right? So, so we can hand in this belt buckle to the guy, or we could actually sell it to the trader. How much will they give you for it? We could find out, and we could and we could weigh it up. How how? Yeah. So if we go to the pursuits, right? Yeah. Return the belt buckle. I, I should return the belt buckle, it says. should. Yeah, so, so Nadia's just pointed out that the Graving Father gives you research items if you hand him the belt buckle, but in the demo they're not useful. And that's 80 dollars. 80 bucks is pretty good. Yeah, that's like half our money already. So I, yeah, whatever, sell it, you know. How will we sleep at night <laughs> on 80 dollars? So yeah, we, we can let them know that we sold it <laughs> to the trader as well. So you explain that you sold the belt buckle, and uh, he's maybe going to go and chase up the trader. He's, he seems okay. Yeah. I feel alright. <laughs> and of course, we could have resolved that question another way. We could have thrown the belt buckle back overboard, and that would have completed the, the quest in a, in a slightly different way. Um, but why don't we go and sell these fish that are? Probably going stale and not very well. Stale, stale. Mm. It's okay. So if you leave fish too long, they will actually like completely rot away and become entirely worthless. So you can't hang on to things for everything, for, forever. Uh, and that applies to your storage as well. So you can't just put things in storage and leave them. Probably grab a few more cod as well. Not from that last one. Not from this one, but yeah, yeah. And we'll take a trip around the coast. Yeah. So there's actually like a whole lot of things to do in the demo. I think some people have played the demo for like eight hours before they found everything. We tried to put as many things in as we could, and we maybe put in too many things. But yeah, it's cool that people are spending so long. Um, do the materials rot or is it just fish? No, it is just fish. Materials stay good forever. That's right. That doesn't make everything rot. Cool. So we're going to fill... fulfill this order. Um, and he's actually going to open up some new services to us, which is selling crab pots. He's going to give us one for free, but yeah, crab pots are another type of fishing. Um, it's kind of like a, a asynchronous mechanic. You can drop your crab pot, go and explore, and then come back half a day or a day later, and you might have some crabs to sell. There you go. So look, this crab was 13. I mean, this squid was 13, and then that's like 34. Yeah, so the aberrations are worth like three times as much. As normal fish, um, and you you will find more aberrations at night as well. So, night fishing can be profitable, but a little bit more dangerous. A little bit, you might see. So we're gonna go and talk to the lighthouse keeper and ask her if she's seen anything. Because if anyone's gonna have seen anything, it'll be the lighthouse keeper. Um, and she's saying that there's a spot around the back of the island where there's an unnatural glow rising from the patch of dark water. Uh, but isn't particularly encouraging us to go there. And in fact, you can, you can see that glow um, sort of in the middle of the screen, which we'll check out later. And we have a, a builder character who wants to talk to us about what it's like outside of town. Mikey doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, we have another question, which is, when the game releases, will demo save carry over? Uh, currently, we're thinking no, it won't be carrying over. Uh, there's a few reasons. One of them is that, like the the game and the pacing is currently balanced around the the demo and a, like a much shorter play time. There's also like a number of quests in this area that. Um, aren't in the demo, uh, so you would kind of skip past those quests, which we didn't want to happen. But 
you can complete the demo or this section quite quickly if you know where things are. Yeah, and if anyone's um, kind of like thrown away any research items from the demo, then they would have kind of shot themselves in the foot going into the main game. Yeah, what's your plan now, Mikey? I'm gonna go to rest a little bit so I can catch some cod. So you might notice it's raining at the moment, there's there's like a dynamic weather system in the game, uh, so it ranges from like clear sunny days with, with flat seas all the way up to heavy storms uh, which have lightning and thunder and rough seas. Yeah, there is a, a, a gameplay side effect to some of these where if, if, if it is storming and the seas are a little rougher, you can't actually drive through them as fast, so it might be a, like through the the larger waves that you'll see out in the open, open ocean. So it might be a good idea to wait until a clearer day if you wanted to make a big crossing. But you know, you can't just like sleep away a whole week because you know, sometimes there are quests that are time dependent. And obviously this town is, is relying on you to be their fisherman. Nice, that was a pretty small yeah. pet. So we're sort of exploring slightly further afield, um, and around here there's a strange shrine with the shape of a fish carved on it. Uh, so it says a slab of rock juts from the water bearing crude symbols of angular fish. Uh, so this is kind of a puzzle that we have, uh, and because we're the developers, we know exactly yeah. how to solve it. But if you look, if you look at the art and in the text, it kind of hints at as to what it wants, pretty strongly. <laughs> no, you gotta rotate. That's not right. You gotta rotate that other card. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And this way? No. Nah, left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Although we are one card short as well. Yeah, okay. Um, we gotta give it our trophy. Maybe <laughs> um, I get a couple more on the way out. Perhaps it's the nearest one to them right here somewhere. Yeah, there's some. There, those are mackerel, I think. You, I mean, you could use this by glass. Yeah, thank you. So there's a flounder. To the right. There should be some. Yeah. No, no, too late. We might, yes. have, we might have fished them out. Now that was a viper fish. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Viper fish are in the game. Just try it out there. Should we? Yeah. Really find them? What could go wrong? Oh, <laughs> on the way. All right. There are Great. there are a lot of fishing spots in the game. Um, we don't all know where they all are. <laughs> <laughs> One more, Mikey. I know, but not, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> no, because I want that trophy. Oh, he's gonna swap. <laughs> he's gonna trade it for the trophy. <laughs> no, you're good. You got everything. Yeah, cool. okay. I got, I got, I got what I need. There's a lot of like backseat tetrising that happens when you watch other people <laughs> play this game. So we're gonna head back there and. Put another couple cod in. I'm gonna take your trophy out first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's list the it. Snatches it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Money fish. Um, there's a question which is other fishing spots preset or random? They are preset. I went through every single one manually <laughs> and placed them and made sure that it made approximate sense for the species of fish, like flounder, are always sort of near sandy bottoms and deep sea fish are always in like deep water. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was very manual. And it was all manually tested. <laughs> um, but we just, we just got a, a cool piece of equipment from that, right? What was it that we got? Yeah, let's have a look at the description. So it was a sinew spindle, um, depending on your pronunciation. Uh, Handline reel wrapped in a length of stretchy sinew. One end is grafted to a crude bone hook. 
And the cool thing about this is that it catches both coastal and shallow fish. Our previous other, our other rods catch shallow and coastal, um, but we can actually optimize our inventory here if we wanted to by selling or chucking out our other two types of rods. Um, so there's ways of like, yeah, optimizing your cargo layout when you find these sort of cool and rare pieces of equipment. Especially early on when you don't have all the rod spaces and you go to different zones and then you'll realize that, ah, oh, I need to switch out my rods in order to get the fish in this particular area as well. What would that do to your fishing speed? Yeah, so each rod has a fishing speed statistic as well. Um, the sinew spindle is actually quite a low speed, it's only a plus 5% bonus, um, whereas our other ones give us about like a 50% bonus combined. Um, so that, that affects how quickly the mini game can be solved, which in turn affects how long, it, uh, like how late you stay out. Um, mm. So I guess it's a bit of a toss up at this point whether we want to save space or we want to save time on fishing. And there's a question from someone who has played the demo and had a frustration, which is uh, replacing multiple fish at the same time. It can yeah. become pretty unwieldy with the inventory. Um, it's something we're looking into. We've had a lot of uh, feedback about that. Um, so yeah, watch this space. Yeah, it's this whole idea of like when you've got two things. Like I think one of our things is, well, you've got two hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're grabbing some scrap for the builder? Yeah. Yeah. So, you're staying out at night here. You feel okay about it? Yeah, it's fine. What's the worst that could happen? Um, so one of our crab pots had a fiddler crab in it, uh, which is a pretty large guy. Yeah. Good luck with that one. I don't think you can fit that in. Nah, you can... Yeah. Screw it. Okay, we'll check those materials out. Did you hear that? <laughs> uh, so there's a boat there. You might want to move away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's, uh, that's not a boat, Mikey. <laughs> okay. Did we lose anything? Uh, our, our lights oh, got damaged. Oh, our lights. <laughs> So, yeah, we just got attacked by some creature from the fog, um, which did a couple points of damage to us. In, in Dredge, your spatial inventory system, uh, when it takes damage, you actually lose the cell until you get it repaired. And if your equipment gets damaged, your equipment stops working until you get it repaired. So if that had hit our engines, we would have been really screwed. Yeah, it'll take away that engine speed that it's given you as a bonus. But, so, one big part of why all of your equipment is like bolted down is that you won't lose it when it gets hit, but it will be out of commission. However, if the damage lands underneath one of your fish in your inventory, the fish are going to fall through that, that hole and you've lost that, that money. That fish or that, that fish, item or that person. Or that item or that anything. Yeah, so there are very few items in Dredge which are like sacred. Pretty much anything can be like thrown overboard or lost. Uh, and, you know, it's up to you to sort of try to adapt to that. So we can repair our damage at the, at the shipwright and our inventory is freed up again and our light works again. Do you want to head back out at night? Yeah, sure. We're good now. I think of, we've heard like a random ding now and then, but we're not sure where that's actually coming from. It might be the controller disconnect. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so why don't you head, head over to Steel Point and uh, do that quest for the builder. Um, you could also, why don't you open up the encyclopedia? Um, so the, the game actually pauses while a lot of these um, screens are up, so you can take your time and, and read these things. There's, you're not about to get attacked by a monster. Um, but yeah, our encyclopedia shows uh, all of the fish in the game, of which there will be 128 um, when the full game releases. 
Uh, and you can you can read up on you know where the fish is available and how you caught it. And for the fish that you haven't caught yet, you can see where you have to go and what you have to have in order to catch that fish. Or crab. Cool. And also we've managed to get a couple books along the way oh, as yeah, well. Cool. So we got a book from the dock worker, I think. Um, so books, th these are basically skill books. Um, you can set it as your active book by clicking it, and then you just play the game and it sort of passively unlocks. Um, we'll, we'll get some progress. The title of the book kind of gives a hint as to what like skill you're going to learn from it, but you won't find out actually what it grants you until you finish reading. Here we've got a host earware. I want to read that description. Numerous glowing shapes flicker and squirm behind a distended ribcage. The rest of the fish is withered and drained. <laughs> That's good. Good <laughs> uh, There's a question which is why was it 128? Is it because I'm a computer nerd? No, it's just coincidence. It's <laughs> complete coincidence. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. The eye at the top of the screen is looking pretty panicked, uh, which is meaning that things will start happening to us. You saw the splash in the water there. Might have been a warning. Yeah. Let's try to for the, the dredge spot. Yeah, I should really shut up, but fish is fish. Fish is fish. Fish is fish. It's not. I'm gonna buff because I'm not gonna chuck it away anyway. Yeah, so you can always throw away fish if you, if you catch it and you don't want it. So thankfully there's a few um, material spots around Steel Point, which is where the builder wanted that stuff delivered to. I think there's some lumber just behind here. And maybe after we do this we sort of uh, sail around the back of these screen islands. But we can just fit a couple of lumber in, which is good. Real quick. <laughs> or, or scare them away with a foghorn. It worked. <laughs> yeah, I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, some of the um, some of the quests in the game uh, are like. Uh, in Dory Puzzles, this one is kind of pre-solved for you because it's just, you know, a, a beta quest. Um, but yeah, you'll see more of this kind of stuff in the full game. So we've delivered all of the materials that the builder wanted and we should go let her know. Mm. Another cool thing is, it's like, if you listen in the background, you can hear all the bird calls and then so they are actually of the New Zealand birds and everything as well, which we thought was kind of cool because you can get them anywhere else. I just like when I'm working, just sitting at the stock in the background. This feels really cool working with that sound in the background. I think we have kookaburras in, in one of the areas <laughs> which aren't actually native, but yeah, birds from this part of the world. Just kind of like monster. Yeah, and the bird life changes at night as well, so like owls and stuff. Um, maybe head around to the. That's that, right? Uh, it's around there. It's pretty sure it's straight. Oh, pretty sure it's straight through here, the right. Um, we have a question which is Is there any way to make the mini games easier? Uh, yeah, yeah, so one of the. Actually, yeah. One of the things we wanted to do right off the bat was not make an annoying fishing mini game because there are too many games with annoying fishing mini games. Mm -hmm. So we wanted it to be like completable for everybody. There is an accessibility option to basically remove some of the, the penalties in the fishing minigame um, yeah. and the dredging minigame as well. So yeah, it's called relaxed fishing mode. Um, if you're struggling with the, with the minigame, you could try turning it on. So there's a, there's a weird stone here which we can touch, but it, it doesn't respond to us. 
Um, there is a way to make this respond to you in the demo, but we're not gonna we're not gonna show you that secret on stream. Yeah. Um, so we gotta go and tell the builder that her house is ready to be built. Okay. That's good. So yeah, a lot of this game at the start is like traveling, uh, and there are there are a number of ways that you speed up traveling and make it easier for you for yourself through like getting a bigger boat to get more engines um, and abilities that speed you up. One of the one of the core things, obviously, in a game like this is is the water, um, and we spent. <laughs> many months trying to get the water right, both visually and like behaving right with waves. It's been a journey, for sure. I think there was, there was probably like a year where the water changed every month. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, it might still be secretly changing, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> So we got some crabs in that crab pot. The uh, crab pot is sort of on its last legs. It's got about a day left before it stops working. And one of the things that can happen at night when you're a little bit panicked is you can sort of see things that aren't there or are there, but they can hurt you as well. So we saw a rock there that sort of shimmered into existence. Builder, and she actually wants to come on board. Um, we've apparently been signed up to ferry her over there, and you can of course rotate her to set her in better. <laughs> but before we leave, we've got some crabs. So you might notice we're playing on a PlayStation controller at the moment. The game has full controller support on uh, all controllers um, and should use the, the correct glyphs as well so you don't have to figure out which is A, B and X, Y. It should sort of map itself. Oh, and you've got this for him right now. <laughs> so the fishmonger wanted an aberration because he wants to see what happens if you eat it. Was that what he said? It sounded like that's what he was after. So he's going to give us some research parts, which we can just dunk straight into storage if we want. And the fish is whispering to him. <laughs> uh, so he wants us to get out of here. Um, we'll, we'll sell that last crab that we had <laughs> and then leave. And he slams the door behind us. And he's, and he's gone. Closed up shop. So maybe we have to find somewhere else to sell fish. We'll see if he's alright later, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so are we going to deliver the builder? Yeah, sure. Alright. Okay. There is a request you to eat. Yeah, we're not going to eat the builder, but we're going to uh, go straight over. We're fast enough, we'll be fine. Alright, cool. I trust you. Okay. You might want to. I turn your lights on. Oh, I hit that boy. Oh, no. <laughs> he shouldn't have gone in there. So we lost the builder, which we did not script. Um, so I guess that means she's not getting her house. But we got sustainable fishing. We did read a book. <laughs> so why don't you check out your cabin, actually, while you're here. Um, so you can see we finished that book because it's in green, and it says we have unlocked a 10% chance not to reduce a fish stock when catching a fish with a rod. And we're going to start another book. The, the reading was lost over the board. So that quest is complete. <laughs> in a way. In a, in a way. 
Yeah, you probably don't want to be around here at night. Yeah, anymore. probably go this way. Yeah, we could go and check out that red glow. Yep. What could go wrong? Wait a second, is it still there? Where was that? Yeah, don't go towards that. No, no, <laughs> no. There's the shrine we completed. And oh, that's a uh, there's like a shipwreck. Yeah. So yeah, you can find a number of uh, wrecked ships in a world like this, uh, which contain useful items. Valuable items. We're kind of low on health. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're risking it a little bit here. Fine. What's the worst that can happen? So this first boat can only take three hits yeah. before you're kind of sunk. Four, sorry. And you might actually see, like, sort of when you're like super low health, your boat will start like flaming. It'll be really obvious that you're about to die. Um, we have a question which is, so we've seen some of the nocturnal threats. Are there any threats that you might not be safe from even in the light of day, for instance? Uh, short answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, remember, there are some yes, of those there threats. Are. If you remember earlier, we had like those ravens that were trying to steal my stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're pretty tame. Yeah. And a lot of the threats in the demo are pretty tame. We sort of start things out pretty, pretty easy on you. The builder. <laughs> yeah. Well, we might not make it to the the light, the big red light. I mean, yeah. We might. So, yeah. We might be able to. We just got to rest off the sanity stuff as well. All right. So it's gonna actually sleep us until six a.m. the next day. You don't have to sleep the whole time. You can sort of interrupt that and wake yourself up. Mm -hmm. Key. The cold metal shimmers a strange shine as he holds it. The shape of the key now somehow seems changed, smaller. Has it always been this way? Where's the lock? The collector grows agitated. 
It seems the pieces we're looking for have travelled much further than anticipated. Much further. All the same, they must be found. I never said this would be easy. I suppose we'll see if you have what it takes soon enough. And that's the end of our demo for Dredge. Uh, so you can actually, I mean, obviously you can play it now. Um, you can finish the demo and you can keep playing it. In fact, if we went to the menu and went continue, you'd be able to keep playing and exploring and finding all of the secrets. We really only, I mean, we played for an hour. We scratched the surface of what's available in the demo. Yeah. Um, but please add it to your wish list. Um, it really helps us out um, adding things to your wish list. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Um, and we hope that you guys enjoy the demo, and if you do, um, leave some feedback. You can push F10 at any time to give feedback, and it sends it through to us. Um, and join our Discord if you want to chat with us at, at yeah. any time. Or if you just want help finding something in the demo, or uh, understanding something, the Discord, we've got lots of helpful people there, and us, willing to answer your questions. At the very least, putting really cool emojis. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Thanks a lot, folks. All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye.